Hey guys, my name is Tensor. Welcome to another Flutter tutorial video. Today we're going to be talking about how we can deal with the orientation of our device inside of Flutter, as well as our app lifecycle events. Here is a nice little chart that shows the various different lifecycle events that happen inside of an Android application. The part of this chart that you really want to focus on is the activity lifecycle. So we have the onCreate method, and then we have this onStart method, and then it comes all the way through. We have an onResume method, and we also have an onPause method, and then after the onPause method and the onStop method, we have all of the other methods that go through to shut down the actual application. In this particular application, we're going to be really looking at the onResume method and the onPause method. This is what an iOS app lifecycle kind of looks like. It's a little bit more chaotic, but it is sort of similar in some ways. The onPaused method sort of aligns with this application did enter background method. And then the onResume method sort of aligns with this application will enter foreground method. Anyway, if you guys want to look at these photographs and these charts, I will link them into the tutorial both in the description and in the article for this video. All right, so we're going to be building out a very basic application in this tutorial. We want to make an import before we start doing anything, however, and that is for the Flutter Services Library. The Flutter Services Library essentially just exposes some of the more bare metal operations to the Flutter layer. So in other words, it exposes these services. We can access an object called System Chrome, and then we can access various different methods on this object to set up some of the more background settings of our application. The one that we want to worry about right now is this one, which is called Set Preferred Orientations. In here, we can set up a list of the app orientations that we want our application to be able to handle. So in here I can add in various different device orientation states. I'm going to add in two. One of them for landscape left, meaning if the user is holding the phone upright and they rotate the phone to the left, then you will have it then in landscape left mode. Device orientation portrait up is what happens when the user holds the phone upright. If I didn't want landscape mode, for instance, I could come in here and just completely remove this and it would make it so that this application would not rotate when the user rotates their device. So I've already got some boilerplate in here. I've got our root widget, which is just a stateless widget that returns a material app and then we're pointing towards a stateful widget. Down inside of this stateful widget, we can create a scaffold with an app bar, and then for the body of the scaffold, if we want to deal with the actual orientation, we can use a widget called an orientation builder. This orientation builder has a callback function called a builder. This is similar to the list view builder or the grid view builder, and this builder takes in the build context and then the orientation. In here, I'll create a center with a container, and then what I'll do is I'll take and I'll put in a ternary operation that checks to see what our orientation is, and then changes the color of our container based on the orientation of the device. So we say here, if the orientation equals orientation.landscape, then color this container with the amber color, otherwise color the container with purple. Here's what our application looks like in landscape mode. And when I click and I rotate the screen back to portrait mode, it should then change to purple and then rotate the screen up and down like this. And you can see that that's in fact what happens. This type of swapping behavior can be very useful, especially when dealing with elements like grid views and padding on containers and things like that. Here's an example of using a grid view and then reactively changing the number of columns that you would have based on whether or not the grid view is in landscape or portrait. We're creating a grid view count and then 
we say cross axis count, which is the number of columns in this particular grid view. And this is based on the orientation. So if the orientation is landscape, then we want to have four columns. And if it's portrait, then we want to only have two. And then we can generate a list of widgets by using the generate method, putting in the number of widgets that we want, which will be 40, and then taking and adding a callback function in where we're putting basically each number into a tile. So this will count from one all the way up to 40. If you look at the application, we have tile zero, one, two, three, et cetera. And if we rotate it, you can see now we have four different columns per each row instead of just two. I'm just going to comment out our grid view and we'll go back to our container. And now let's look at the life cycle of our application. If we want to look at the various different lifecycle states of our application, we can use this mix-in called Widgets Binding Observer. So for our home page stateful widget, we can add this to the home state class. This mix-in gives us access to various different objects and methods that will allow us to directly take a look at the actual life cycle of our application. So we can set up some observers by adding them to our init state function, and then of course adding the dispose to our dispose function. So we say widgets binding dot instance to get an instance of this object, and then we add an observer, and we want that observer to be this class, so we put this inside of it. And then for dispose, we get that same instance and then we remove the observer and we pass in the class. This mixin also gives us access to a method called did change app lifecycle state. And this takes in the app lifecycle state, which is just called the state. And then the normal behavior is just to call the super version of this method. For this application, what I'm going to do is create a global app lifecycle state variable called app lifecycle state. And then inside of this method, I'll take and I'll call set state and push the state that's being passed into here into the app lifecycle state variable. Now we can add a text child to our container that just says app lifecycle state. And then we use string interpolation to put our app lifecycle state inside of it. Here I'll comment out the orientation stuff so that we don't have this color overflowing on our text. And then when I build up the application, you can see that the app lifecycle state will start out as null. If I click this button here and then I reopen the application, you can see we actually get app lifecycle state dot resumed because what happened is the application was put into the background and then when we reopened it, it was set to the onResumed method. And actually, when I click this button to close the app, what's happening in the background is that the app lifecycle state is becoming paused. And then when we reopen it, it's showing us that it's been resumed. So what I'm going to do to show this lifecycle is take and add a print statement to our did change app lifecycle state function. And this will make it so that when we actually pause the application, it should print out that it was in fact paused. So here's the debug console. And now when I click the home button, you can see it actually does say app lifecycle paused. And then when I click and reopen it, it now says app lifecycle resumed. Now there are various ways that you can take advantage of these state changes. One of the most common ways would be to push data to a data store when the app lifecycle turns into a paused state and then grab that data when the app lifecycle goes back into a resumed state. Now let's build out some functionality to kind of simulate this style of action. So now I'm going to create two new global variables to simulate our data store and then the input data that we're passing into the data store. Here we have a list of string, which we'll call our data. This will be our quote unquote data store. And then we'll have a text editing controller so that we can get the string out of a text field widget. By default, we'll initialize our data to an empty list. 
so that it will be empty when we start this application. So now inside of our did change app lifecycle method, we can run a switch statement on the state. So this is on the app lifecycle state. And then when case app lifecycle state paused, we take our controller.txt and we check to see if it is not empty. And if it's not empty, then we just add that text into our data list. Otherwise we do nothing, so we pass back null. And then we take our controller text and set it equal to an empty string, which will clear out the text box. For resumed, for now we'll just have this break, so it'll do nothing. And then for default, we'll do the same. Down inside of our user interface, we can now create a text field and we can put in our controller. And then just to check that we are actually adding stuff to our data list, we can then create a text field and embed our data list index number zero, which will be the first item added to our list. Now we do need to add a little bit of logic to this text field so that we don't get a null back. We do this by checking to see if that our data list length is equal to zero, and if it is, we pass back an empty string. Otherwise, we do get our zero indexed element of our data list. Here's what our application currently looks like. We can click in our text box and we can type in whatever. So let's type in testing the app. And now, rather than hitting like a button or anything, let's click the home button and we'll now resume our application. And you can see here that the text box gets cleared and the actual string now appears below it inside of our text field. So essentially what happened here is as soon as this state was hit, our data was pushed into our list, which held on to the data, and then it was pushed into our text widget. When we re-resumed the application, the state then updated the user interface, which showed us that the text box was now empty and that our data was then pushed into our text field. Now, if we actually want to get the data out of our string on resume, we need to create another global variable called get data. And now down in our switch statement where we have this f lifecycle state.resumed case, we can call set state and we can pass our data index zero into get data. And then we can set our data list to empty. And then for our text field, we can put our get data string in here Check to see if it's null. If it's null, then we put in an empty string. Otherwise, we actually get the value out of this string. So now I can type in a string, say get data, exit the app, then reload the app, and you can see that the string now is back in our body. So we're effectively storing our data and then getting it back. And of course, this would be much more useful if you're using something like Firebase or if you are using the shared preferences library to cache the data. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you dislike the video, then by all means, download it as much as you like. Have a good day.